All right, cool. So yeah, we're recording right now. All right, so Sebastian. So I found your content on Instagram, TikTok, and you're mainly known for like investing in trading, entrepreneurship, but mainly yes. for like trading. So let's get, let's go back into like, when did you first start? How did you get into like trading and, and stocks and stuff like that? Yeah. So uh, kind of like the first thing that got me into uh, the, 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 the financial market was cryptocurrency, right? <laughs> Typically people always enter crypt, uh, like like stocks, crypto, any type of, you know, tradable asset, they always enter when it's going parabolic, right? Mm -hmm. All the time, right? Because there's so much hype. You're a novice. You don't know what you're really, you know, mm -hmm. uh, trading. You don't even know what you're looking at. You're just saying like, wow, a lot of people are making money. I can be one of those people. So I was one of those people. Uh, I got in around like early 2017. Uh, made a solid amount of money, like made a huge return, made, made a pretty good return. But that's the thing, like anyone can make money in a bull yeah. market. Now, did you think that you were lucky like at that point or did you kind of know what you were, what completely you were doing? Completely lucky, man. Completely lucky. Like looking back at it now from being more experienced, completely lucky. I mean, I knew one indicator, which was like uh, RSI, which tells you like whether something's overbought or oversold. And I thought I was like a, the next freaking like, you know, st like ne the next biggest trader because I was like, oh my yeah. God. You can look at things that will tell you whether it's a good time to buy, but it's so much harder than that, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, getting in, uh, I had no idea what I was looking at. I basically just put in money. I made a huge return and I thought I was, you know, a genius. And mm -hmm. you, uh, you get hit with the Dunning-Kruger effect. I don't know if you heard about the Dunning-Kruger effect, but basically it tells you, it, 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 you, you go through certain stages of uh, awareness and knowledge on a certain topic, basically. And you always start with, you know, being overly cocky, thinking that you know something, then you realize, then your confidence goes down. You realize, wow, this is a lot more to it. Then you go up and then you become, you know, better at it. But you always start more confident. So yeah. when I got in, uh, in 2017, made some money, but eventually lost a lot of money as well in 2017, as a lot of people did, right? Because from crypto, right? From crypto, yeah. So, lost a solid amount of money. And then when I lost it, I was like, you know what? Like I want to learn how I cannot lose as much money next time. Yeah. Right. So that's what kind of got me into trading was, you know, first making a lot of money and then losing, but then realizing, wow, like there is this whole world that you can make money if you play your cards, right. Uh, let me make sure that I can set myself up so that I don't lose the money next time. Mm hmm. So that's kind of cool because like you first got into like crypto, right? Or investing in general and you got a super high by, by winning big. And then you went to super low. And I think a lot of people would have been like, Oh dude, this is not for me. I'm done. I'm going to go to something else, you know, make money somewhere else, but you kind of stick stuck to it. And what did you do from there? Did you like go on, like listen to podcasts, YouTube videos, research, like how yes, you the biggest show? thing. It's like what I told myself, I was like, well, you know, yeah, I lost a lot of money. There's a lot of people who made more money than me, but just thinking to myself, it's like, yo, this is something that, you know, there's a lot of people who have been able to learn this. What makes me different than them, right? If I just put enough time and effort to learn it, then I will be able to learn it as well. Yeah. Um, and the way that I learned it was through, you know, number one, reading just financial books. Um, I would say the biggest book that has helped me out was, you know, tr how to, uh, trading for a living, right? Which basically goes into the psychology and kind of more like fundamentals of how to trade. It doesn't really get too much into technical analysis, no charting, just understanding the name of the game and how uh, market cycles work, basically. Yes. So that was kind of like the first thing that I read that blew my mind. Um, and then I got into YouTube videos and watched a lot of YouTube videos, uh, you know, and re uh, read a lot of books, like I said. But the biggest learning that I did was through my own failures, right? So I, I lost my, I lost my full account twice. You mean you lost like all your money, like all your funds? Like I went, not all my money, but I lost a solid amount of money, like twice. And it gets to the point, you know, you make money, then you lose all the money. And before you like completely yeah. lose everything, you're like, In the beginning, right? holy shit, let me chill out make sure that I don't get to zero. But you know, I went from high to low, high to low twice. And that really, uh, hold on, give me a sec, sorry. You know what, no worries. I can cut that out, don't worry. Oh, 
I can just uh, cut that part out. Afterwards. You can edit it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the question? So you're talking about how you were going to high and low, high and low, and initially, and then. And then yeah. So basically, I lost my money twice, and then it hit me super hard. Where I'm like, okay, Sebastian, what you're doing right now is not working for you. You think that you know, like you're you're not setting yourself. You're not setting rules for yourself. So mm -hmm. what I did was I set certain amount of principles that you know I would follow no matter what, no matter what. If if if, if, if a stock or a play didn't have X Y Z A B C one two three, then I wasn't gonna buy. So we can't be and too emotional about it. What? You can't be too emotional about it, right? You can't be emotional. You have to be completely logical. That's the reason why a lot of traders, you know, lose money in the beginning is because they're completely emotional and they attach their identity to what they're investing or they're hopeful. You know what I mean? They wish that, oh, you know, maybe if I wait a little bit longer, it'll turn around or, oh God, please. You know, if, 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 if you just turn around this stock, I promise I want like that shit. The stocks don't give a fuck about what your, what your emotions are, what you care. Like they don't care. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to be completely logical and set rules for yourself that you follow, that you live and die by so that you will not lose money again. Right. Mm -hmm. Like one of the, the no, first rule that I follow is if it's already like you never buy when a stock is like going up, up, up. Right. Like, Obviously, if it's made like you, you don't want to buy a stock at, a, at when it's extremely overvalued and when it's already been going up. Right. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I always recommend for people who are just entering, stop looking at charts at the five minute, 15 minute time frame. Right. You're looking at charts way too narrow mind, like way too tunnel vision. You need to open up, look at the bigger picture and look at more of the longer term trend because you know, more likely than not, you're not going to be being able to catch every low and high, every low and high. It's very hard. Very few people do it. Not even day traders do that. I mean, not, not, not even most traders on Wall Street are doing that. Like they're more making long-term plays. They're called swing trades, right? Where you're holding on to trades for like a week, two weeks, three weeks, even a month. Uh, and those, you know, hold way, way more potential. Mm -hmm. So to give context, you are a day trader, right? Do you day trade? I'd say a sw I'd consider myself more of a, a, a swing trader. So by definition, like what is that exactly? I don't really know the exact So the thing. difference between a day trader and a, and a swing trader. So a day trader is somebody who is literally trading every single day, mm -hmm. right? They're in and out of stocks in the span of, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, right? And then the swing trader is somebody who is a little bit more of a long-term, more longer-term investor, not years, but holding on to some plays for maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks. Okay. Uh, and that way you can hold longer-term trends. You can identify trends and hold that long-term profit or, or, or catch that, that whole run, which is a lot easier because number one, uh, you know, you're not attached to your computer all the time. Two, it's a lot less stressful for your, just your mental sanity. Yeah. And three, you can have a life outside of trading. You can do things outside of trading. Yeah. Now I know like we talked about, you do a lot of trading, do swing trades, but like from your, t with your time off, do you have like other business ventures that are you kind of pursuing or is it just like trading for now? Yeah. So right now my main focus, so my main focus of what I've been doing, you know, most of, most of my life is marketing content creation. Mm -hmm digital okay. marketing, basically uh, contacting brands, understanding what their biggest problems are with getting in contact with their potential customers and developing a brand, an image, a message, a message and mm -hmm. digital campaign uh, funnels to target those customers. Okay. And, uh, and that, 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 that is my main focus. That is what I, I, I love to do, but I also love investing. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I, I have two very strong passions. Uh, and, and it's not that, you know, one overrides the other. Uh, I still invest. I'm still, you know, attentive to the stock market. I still like to know what's happening and stuff like that. But um, uh, I, I do like the aspect of, you know, consumer psychology and persuasion and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, if you do like day trading and like, like cre uh, content creation, that would have been really hard because you have two interests. And I think a lot of people say, well, yeah, like you got to pick one thing stick to it and then develop that one business, that one brand, and then move on to the next thing. But if you have like two entities, two brands that you're working on, 
two projects, it's going to be really hard to maintain both of them. But because with swing trading, you can look at it on weeks on end, you know, not every day you have that balance, you know. It's very important not to spread yourself out too thin, right? Um, a lot of people say, you know, it's better to be, you know, you don't want to be a jack of all, a jack of all trades is a master of none, right? Yeah. You don't want to be too horizontal. You'd rather be vertical and become a master in that one set and in, in that one space, yeah. because once you become extremely edu uh, educated in one sense, um, it's people basically believe anything you really say. I know, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it's called the halo effect basically. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is that if you are an expert in one if you are an expert in one category and you de and you seem to be very very knowledgeable in one category then people will assume that you're knowledgeable in all other categories yeah right? so i always tell people focus on one category become a master become very knowledgeable and then you can move on to the next thing but you gotta you, you, you gotta settle down on one thing first yeah I was going to say, like, I forgot the exact term, but like, there's really, really intelligent people. You know, those prodigies are like poly, like, I think polymath, something like that, but they can like literally master every like other subject, like math, physics, you know, those guys are crazy. But like you said, like, you can't really master every individual subject. Yes, you can know a lot, be knowledgeable in those subjects, which is like good. But yeah, I think if you focus on one thing, you can be really like, you know, put your whole brand around that one subject or topic. And like you said, like people recognize you as that one person that does that. Yeah. I mean, it's a, at the end of the day, you only have X amount of time in your day. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, we all have our things that we like to do to de stress and stuff like that. So you really have to think about like, okay, like how much can I really get forward? You know, like, okay, let's say I have, you know, eight hours a day to work or whatever, like, you know, that to, 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 to devote to something. Yeah. Uh, and you spend, you know, four and four doing something else. I mean, think about if you spent that other four just on the same thing, you will double the speed of you becoming knowledgeable in that space. Yeah. So uh, realize, I mean, I'm guessing a lot of the people watching this are young. I mean, that's, that's the one thing that we have in common is that we have time. We have so much time to develop uh, mastery of, of what we want. So it's really important to, you know, not get too ahead of yourself to try to think of attacking too many things. We're young. We have time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd say you, you spend one year, how, 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 how old are you? I'm 23. 23, right. So you spend yeah. one year devoting to something. You can become really freaking good mm -hmm. at something in one year if you devoted all your time to it. And then now what? You're 24, you're still so young, and now you've become, you know, close to an expert level in something. Yeah. Right? But do you think, like, it's good to, like, try everything out when you're young to see what you like? And then yeah. if you have an interest or a passion, then you kind of go all in on that? <laughs> 100%. So if you don't know what you like to do, uh, you 100% should be trying as many things. I mean, number one, just lean towards things that bring you happiness, you know, things that you already find yourself doing naturally, yeah. uh, no matter what it is, you know what I mean? But if you, you know, let's say all you do is play video games. Uh, and let's say, Oh, I don't know if I would want to be a streamer, because I'm, you know, introverted or something like that, then start trying new things, learn about new topics or most importantly what i always tell people look into things that aren't going to be affected by you know ai taking over your job right because that's a huge huge factor coming into the future which a lot of people don't think about at all yeah it can come sooner rather than later you know for sure for sure i mean ai there's a huge company called open ai which is i mean releasing crazy things i mean insane things that are going to be taking so many people's jobs that people should really be scared of and adjusting their, their future careers towards for sure. Yeah. Maybe in our lifetime or next generation, but pretty much soon. Definitely within our lifetime. No doubt about it. No doubt oh. about it. So wait, so you got that spark. So that interest you got from, from trading when you got that high of winning money and then you went to that low of losing it, but for digital marketing, content creation, where did you find that passion? Like how did it come about? Yeah. So one of, I, like I said, I've always had a passion and interest in understanding human persuasion mm -hmm. and consumer psychology, understanding, you know, what motivates someone to feel emotional, what motivates someone to purchase a buy, what makes, what motivates someone to, you know, act a certain way. Uh, because we are all very similar in what uh, attracts us, you know, we're all emotional based creatures. So 
uh, if you're able to tap into a certain emotion to somebody, they're bound to, you know, at least give them your attention or yeah. give, them, give them their attention. Yeah. Um, so wait, are you now working with like local businesses and, or do you have like your own actual like digital media company that you're working on and you're just hitting up brands on social media to help them out? Yeah. So right now I have like a small agency right now where I'm helping out smaller brands and local brand, like more like small businesses to develop out their, their digital presence online. Yeah. Uh, whether that be from, you know, pay-per-click advertising, website optimization, social media management, uh, optimizing, you know, click funnels, whatever it takes for somebody, you know, I always ask people, okay, like who is your perfect customer? And what are you trying to sell them? Mm -hmm. And basically from understanding that, developing a whole plan around it and executing on it and outsourcing some of the stuff, of course, but you know, mostly, mostly me and, 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 and another partner. Yeah. I was going to say like, that's like for an agency, there is so many components, so many variables to making a business successful. You know, like you said, the good uh, click funnels, the marketing, branding, you know, ads, like you name it, right. If they didn't have no social media, you're going to have to do the content creation for their social media. So there's a lot of things in play. And I think like for younger, like our generation or like Gen Z, you know, like they're really like born with like social media and you can see like even on TikTok, there's so many like small businesses being like, they're just growing and scaling because of TikTok alone. You know what I mean? And I feel like for older generations, like they don't really know what TikTok is and they don't really utilize social media like that to help their business out. Agreed. I mean, like I said earlier, like this is a perfect opportunity for younger people to be perceived as experts in the eyes of older people, right? You go to an older person and you give them some little statistics and facts about social media that they didn't know. They're immediately going to trust you that, Hey, this person knows what the hell they're talking about. Right. And then it's your job to back it up. Of course, you're not going to lie and you know, uh, you know, faking it. So you make it only gets you so far, but to get the opportunity. It, it, it's perfect, especially with social media, like you just mentioned, uh, you know, it's a space that a lot of people who weren't born with it have no idea where to start. So that's when, you know, people like our age can just come in and tell them what's up. Yeah. That makes me think like when we get older and we like, say you grow your own business, your own brand, you know, and you have like a younger generation coming up and they hit you up like, yo, Sebastian, like I know X, Y, and Z, I can help you out. Like, I think it's important for us as we get older, for anyone, any entrepreneur, any businessman or woman to really understand like what's new, what's popping, use that to their brand or business because you don't want to be left out. You know, ideally you would like to know what's going on and apply that to your brand service business, whatever it is. 100%, 100%. Something that I do to uh, attract clients and stuff like that is that I will show them examples of what competitors are doing that's mm -hmm. winning and tell them why it's winning and how they could apply it, apply it to them and how it would, how it would work out for them. So I'm like, Hey, look, your competitors are doing this. It's working out for them. They have X, Y, and Z. You should be doing this. You, I know that you're very busy. You need to focus on what you're good at. Let me focus on what I'm good at and let's work together. Yeah. And sometimes they'll be like, ah, I don't know. It's too expensive, blah, blah, blah. And that's when you say, you know, if you're a beginner, you always say, look, I will only charge if off the money that I make, if I don't make money, then you don't have to pay me. But if I make money, then that's fair. And if you do do that model, then you can ask for a lot more. Or if you're really confident, if you're really, really confident, then you can say, how about this? I'll spend a hundred dollars of my own money uh, on, on your advertising and to show you that it works because I believe in earning business, not getting business. Mm -hmm. And if it works, then we can continue forward. Now, if you've been able to make those hundred dollars, even convert into, let's say four people, five people, that's $20 for customer acquisition. That's very expensive. And you should at least be able to get 20 people or five, five people. Uh, then now you've proved that you can do it. And now you can really, really, really upcharge your service, like no, no problem. Like mm -hmm. very, very like no problem. Cause then they're going to have such a feel a fear. Uh, they're going to have such a feeling of missing out. I'm like, Oh my God, this kid just came 
sized me, gave me all this opportunity, and now he's asking for this. Uh, okay, fine, I'll do it. I've done that a couple times, and it's worked very well. It, it gives you the leverage. You don't want to lose yeah. leverage in, 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 in a conversation with, with, with a potential client. Mm -hmm. Now, here, like, here's a question. So say you work for a, a pizza shop, right? And the owners are pretty old, and you know, and you compare that with the brand that's like, I don't know, makeup, cosmetics, you know, those younger people are really going to be go towards like Instagram and TikTok, whereas the pizza shop can be on like, say, Facebook and Instagram. Now, when you talk to those owners, like, do you kind of give them like an idea of like, what are you going to do? Like, how do you kind of like know which social media platform to run ads on? So there's two things, right? So there's search and then there's social, right? So First, you have to ask before the potential customer thinks about coming to your business, what are they doing, right? Are they directly searching for that product or are they just running into it on social media, right? So for example, a pizza shop, when you want to eat food, do you typically eat food from seeing it on an ad or do you like, I'm hungry, where's pizza? And then you look it up, right? So that's how you, that's how you find pizza, right? Very few people are going to impulse buy a pizza because they see it on a Facebook. It's like, oh, I just had food. I'm not that blah, blah, blah. like I'm not in the mindset right now. Right. You want to catch people when they're making that decision immediately. And that's when Google search would come in more handy there. Right. So I think Google search would be a good way if you wanted to do like maybe a seasonal special, a new pizza brand awareness, that's good. Or like a grand opening for something, then that's good. But for any like, you know, restaurant, local business, typically local search ranking is the best thing to do because yeah, yeah. Now, like during the time like of the pandemic, I feel like a lot of businesses are, you know, they're scared, they're panicking because they don't know what to do. So have like a lot of like businesses, brands like come to you or like when you go to them, it's kind of like an easy, I'm not going to say an easy catch, but like you guys get along very well because they need help and you like to offer your services you know, because like they don't know what to do maybe. Yeah. I mean, so like right now, a lot of people think like, Oh, you know, restaurants are, you know, you know, small restaurants are, are trying to hold on to their money and stuff like that. Like it's really hard. They're not going to buy, be buying money. It is true. The biggest thing though, is that you have to find people that the biggest thing that I tell people when trying to find clients, don't try to convince people that marketing is a thing. Don't waste your time on those customers spend time on people that already understand the value of digital marketing. They just don't know what the fuck they're doing. Right? Like you have to find people that are already running ads already, like are already trying to run ads, but their ads suck. So you don't have to tell them, Hey, there's this thing called, you know, Facebook and all this stuff. And they're like, eh, I don't know social media. Like they're like, Hey, you're doing X, Y, and Z wrong. Here's an example of what you can do. I can solve your problem. Mm -hmm. So much easier conversion, a lot less convincing, and you can even upsell them a little bit, right? So it, it's also trying to find the right customer. It's super important. So like when you first started out, like I remember like a couple years back, I was experimenting with like digital marketing and then I stopped because I didn't like it. But I remember like some YouTubers are like, yeah, like uh, cold calling is still a thing, cold emailing is still a thing. It works. Uh, me personally, like I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to call a hundred restaurants, a hundred businesses and see how it goes. And if it doesn't go well, then I'm done. Out of those hundred calls, only three said maybe. And I think I got like one opportunity to do a video and it didn't really go anywhere. Maybe that was like my experience, but on your experience, like, I don't know how you first approach, how you first started your agency. Yeah. So the first way I started a little different than how other people might've started it. Um, I was a uh, freshman in college mm -hmm. and I was serving at a restaurant and it was a pretty big restaurant, really popular bar restaurant area in, uh, in DC. And, uh, basically they fired their social media person at the restaurant. I basically took it on for free, just doing it for fun, taking little videos, whatever. Like I've always liked taking videos. I was doing vine when it first started just for fun. So I've always been into like taking little videos like that. Um, and the corporate uh, office loved the media that was coming out of our store and they hired me to take on that position. Uh, and then after that, I've just uh, been like doing word of mouth, but 
there's other strategies that I, I could tell you to like get uh, potential clients, which are a lot easier. So when, when, uh, when cold emailing, sorry about that. Uh, so when cold emailing, uh, is oh, before I even get into that, sorry, picking the right client, right? So you need to find a client that has a high ticket product to sell. Restaurants are already running on extremely thin margins and they don't have the budget to be putting into marketing like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot harder sell. But if you go to people that have higher ticket clients, specifically, you know, uh, plastic surgeons, dentists, they have, you know, you, you, you those are $3,000 uh, clients, right? Those are, those are $3,000 ticket products that, 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 that they're selling. They're selling crown implants, plastic surgery. And with that, it's a lot easier to sell because if you can tell them, Hey, I can bring four people a month, right. And each person is paying, you know, $2,000 per visit, right. That's $8,000. That means you should have no problem paying me $2,000 a month. Right. And that's only if I, if I bring four, I always, I only have to bring one a week right? You can definitely do more than one a week. So the way that I would contact them is dear dentist, would you be, would you, uh, are you able to take on five more clients a month? Are you able to take on 10 more clients a month? Please let me know. Thank you. Most of the time they're going to respond. Yeah, of course. Like what's up? I'd be like, ah, okay, well, my name's Sebastian. I do this. I, like, I run an agency. My main focus is this. I would love to hop on a call to talk to you more. Then once you hop on, like, or do you have a 10 minute, do you have 10 minutes uh, for, for, for a quick talk? Everyone has 10 minutes. If they say no, forget about them. They're, 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 li they're lying to you. Everyone has 10 minutes, right? But then that 10 minute call, if you talk right, it can lead into 30 minutes, but you typically want to keep it short, right? Because the point of the call is not to sell the pro is not to sell the client. The point of the call is to get the meeting, right? Yeah. So the email is not to sell. The email is to get the call. The call is to get the meeting and the meeting is where you want to close, right? So you don't want to talk about anything closing until you meet them in person, right? So, uh, that's the way that I would get clients. Um, another way, talk to your, talk to your family, talk to your family, friends, talk to all your DS deals, like, you know, I, I, everyone that you have, um, and say like, you know, everyone has a dentist, everyone has a doctor, maybe some of your DS be talking to some plastic surgeons, who knows, and you can get warm connections through there. Yeah. I feel like with an agency, if you work with your own bubble, I feel like word of mouth, I feel like with agent, with an agency, the word of mouth, uh, approach is like far bigger than any other like brand or service you know i think once you have one i think it's kind of like the snowball effect where you just like, keep accumulating more exactly exactly get one all you need is one and your friends and family could probably like most likely get you one client who's down to do something with you mm -hmm. right once you get that one forget about everything else focus all your time on that one client and making it the best possible testimonial that you can get because mm -hmm. once you have that one person now you have a portfolio, right? And now you have social proof that you can bring into other people. The, once you get your first client and you do well, right? It's not about just getting the first one. You have to do well. You have to show progress. You have to show results. But once you do that, it's a lot easier to get new people, especially if you're targeting the same people within the same niche. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel like with an agency, it's really hard to like scale, you know? Because like, say a business, like say you do very well with them, say like a gym membership. You know, they have their max capacity is 100 members. They have 50 once you come in, then they're, now they're at 100. You can only do so much, right? So they're probably not going to need you, I'm assuming, at the end. So then you have to find another business to um, provide your services, right? And not only that, but if you want to look for more businesses, you go, you're only one person. You only have so much time in a day. You need to hire more people for your agency. Like, how do you look at that? Like, how do you scale or are you planning to scale your business? Yeah, uh, I don't have any intention in selling my business. Um, I think the most important thing that you can do when if you know your, your business starts getting too big, well, number one, you really have to focus on you know staying within the same niche, right? Because that how, that's what allows you 
it'll automate your whole process a lot better, right? So if you're working with gyms, still work with gyms. Don't move on to new things. Don't work with chiropractors, dentists, like stick with gyms because then you can copy and paste all that, all the data that you have, all the strategies that you have, all the campaign measurements that you have. You can basically copy, pretty much copy and paste to the same people and it automates it so much faster. And then other thing is that with digital marketing, like you don't have to be in the local area. You don't have to be marketing to the people that you live in the local area with. So I'll, I'll explain to you. So basically if, 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 if you want to expand, let's say, okay, your local gym, it's already packed to the max. You want to look at, you want to find other new clients, but you don't want, you don't have any other gyms in your local area, start calling gyms around the country. Right. And there's, like, Oh, well, how, how am I going to get, uh, like photos or everything like that? How am I going to do this? You include that in the cost of what you charge. You let them know, Hey, we're going to need photographers. This is how much photographers cost and just post ads on Craigslist, post ads on, you know, Facebook post, or you can even use an app called snapper, which is basically like the Uber for, uh, for, 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 uh, for, 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 photographers I'm sorry uh so you 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 can still get clients and still kind of work remotely i mean all the clients that i'm working with right now i don't see them at all yeah like i i'm not i don't even live close to them uh but i'm still able to you know get feet on that in that local area and get content right so you you my most important thing to be able to scale efficiently is to be able to make sure that you have the same type of client don't try to and this comes back to what, what what you and me were talking about earlier don't spread yourself out too too horizontal go vertical no gyms know exactly what to do with gyms be the best gym marketer in your area mm -hmm, that makes sense so what do you what do you typically focus on right me here? i focus on uh tech so right now earlier first earlier i was focusing on you know uh dentists plastic surgeons coronavirus hit now I'm trying to focus more on uh, tech and just like e-commerce and stuff like that. Uh, so right now I'm working with uh, a uh, alcohol delivery uh, business. Uh, and I'm also working with this, um, partnered up with this other uh, content agency that we're doing collaborations with. Um, I'm doing this, uh, what is it? Uh, pro like um, skincare product and stuff like that. Um, and for now, those are just the two that I'm working on right now. And they, like, they, they, they keep me busy, right? The thing is that I do like full 360, uh, like, like the whole, sorry, I can't even speak right now. The whole thing. So you do like A to Z for them. Basically, I'd, I'd rather do A to Z for a, f uh, a few people than just doing one aspect for, you know, a lot of different people because once you just do like, cause it takes the whole thing. You know what I mean? It yeah. takes A to Z to see results. It's not just social media. It's not just doing Facebook ads. It's not just having, you know, Instagram stories twice a day. Like it takes the whole A to Z to see results. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like as a business owner, they'd be like, yo, Sebastian, like, yeah, I'll pay you a monthly retainer, but I want to see results in, in one month. So what the heck? Like, how do you kind of like approach that? I feel like a lot of business owners would say that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on the business, right? If you're good, you can provide, I mean, if you're doing like pay-per-click advertising, you will see results in a month. But if it's like, you know, if they're asking you, okay, I want, uh, I want you to, you know, manage my Instagram and social media and I'll pay your monthly retainer, but I want to see results. Right. Mm -hmm. That's when you have to tell them. And that's when you have to put your educator hat on that expert hat of like, Hey, that's not how this works, right? That's not how this works. Uh, you know, Instagram is not a huge converting uh, way. It's, it's not a way to convert people onto your platform. It's a way to have social proof that you're an actual business, right? Mm -hmm. Very few people are, you know, going to be buying off your Instagram. So you, depending on what, what it is, you have to re-educate them and act as the expert. Tell them that's not how it works this is how it works with whatever it is. So like, for example, um, like, 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 like the example that I, I said, you'll have people that want you to, you know, manage their Instagram, manage their social media, but 
but but like they don't want to put any ad spend money on it yeah. and they want to do everything for free and they're like okay i want to see results well you know you have to realize you know uh like i said this is not you know social media is not really a way to convert people that much it's more of a way to show your your who you are show your brand show your image show your social proof okay this is a real company they have an instagram they have people that follow them they have likes they have comments like this is not a bot account like this is a real account that's mostly what instagram's for mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're working with like restaurants or like family owned businesses like if you're working with e-commerce then that's a different thing but for smaller like your first like family owned businesses restaurants like i said uh it's just not going to convert. So basically, long story short, in a nutshell, you have to be the educator. You have to re-educate your client and tell them what's up because they aren't the expert in marketing. You are, right? They you are the expert. Yep. You are the expert in marketing. And if they don't believe you, if they're like, nah, that's nah, forget about it. Like, I want to see my results. Then better to leave that client because they're going to give you so much stress in the future that you wish you did not take them on. Yeah. So like for the pessimistic thinkers, they'd be like, yo, like agencies are too saturated. Creating an agency is too saturated. There's too many in my local area. I don't want to do it. Like what would be like your response? Like, do you think that creating a digital agency is oversaturated or there's a lot of opportunity to create one? It is an it is a field that is getting more saturated, but if you're questioning that you, if you should even do it before you've tried, or if you're questioning to get into it because there's already too many people and you don't know, then you shouldn't even start because you're not that excited about it. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, like you should be starting something that you are excited for. Don't try to catch the current trend. Because yeah. you're 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 most likely going to be entering a, a market that is extremely saturated, and you're going to be competing with people who are experts, who already have this shit automated, who know exactly what's doing, and they're gonna you know push you down to the ground. Uh, but if you love it so much that you don't care, then get into it. You will perform well. There's more. There's money out here for everyone. There's not a, a shortage of money. Right? That is not a problem. There is not a problem. Like, that is not a problem. It's not like, oh, there's not enough clients out there. That is not a problem. Now, have the expectations of, you know, what people expect on social media change? 100%. But again, you know, if, if, if you want to do it, then you will find a way to do it. But if you're already coming into the game thinking like, ah, oh, it's too many people, it's going to be hard. No shit, it's going to be hard. Doing anything entrepreneurial is going to be really fucking hard. But, you know, really question yourself. If, if you're already coming into it with doubt, I would highly, I would highly reevaluate what, what, what you're actually choosing. Yeah. You could not have said any better. I think if you second doubt yourself, second guess yourself, then maybe it's not for you because I think like with creating agency is one of the hardest businesses because not only do you have to know like the tactics of like running a business, but like you said, the human psychology, the relationship between you and the owner or like people managing the business, you know, you need to have that, like that tight bond, especially when you do it remotely, you know, kind of keep communicating. So just yeah. point. And, and being up to date with the trends, you know, understanding that that's, that's one of the beauties that I love about marketing and about digital marketing is that, you know, these trends, things are changing every single day or not. I mean, okay. Every single week, right. Every month, there's a new thing that is, is, is talked about now that you can use to create a message, to brand yourself properly. You know how many companies took advantage of the Black, Matter, Black, Matters, uh, Black Lives Matter movement to create a brand for themselves? So many people take advantage of it, right? So, you know, you, you see that these, these times are changing super quickly. It allows for the small dog to be right in front of the starting line with all these big dogs, right? Because everyone now has this new world event to talk about. Right. Yeah. So for example, with TikTok, TikTok just came out. Okay. Now everyone has to relearn TikTok. Right. So now you as a new person, okay, now I have an advantage because everyone now is starting from ground zero. So that's another positive, optimistic way to look at it. Right. It's not that it's overly saturated. I mean, it is overly saturated, but it's also changing so quick that it gives you leverage to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. So like when you first like started your agency, 
what was like the hardest, like, I guess the biggest obstacle you created your first or finding hmm. your first? Uh, uh, the biggest, I think me personally, me personally, it's super important when you're talking to your clients that you don't over promise and under deliver, right? So it's super important that you talk about what you can actually do. And I know this sounds very obvious, right? But you know, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, I can do this, I can do that. And they're not really experts on it or they've never done it before or they know about it in you know, theoretical, like they're very good theoretical marketers, right? So like in theory, if I was to do this, this and that, it would work, right? And like, oh yeah, yeah, this sounds, this sounds right. Oh, you've never done it before, right? So, uh, especially when starting, don't be a theoretical marketer, right? Know what you know, stick to or stick to what you know, and sell that, right? Um, that 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 is super important. You know, it's kind of cool. It's like you are working with many businesses. You know, you're in the trenches with them as you work with them, so you kind of understand like maybe what the different markets are. So you're kind of acquiring like all this knowledge on business, you know, on that one niche, but now you said you're now going into tech, you're doing with the, we said one was a, an alcohol delivery business mm -hmm. one was a skincare. So you're kind mm -hmm. of working with all these different types of brands and you're learning the industry too. So you're acquiring like all this knowledge. And I think that's really cool. And like maybe like some way down the line, if you want to create your own brand, you will kind of know what to do because you had that experience. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I mean, the biggest thing when creating a brand is you have to know who your customer is. You have to know who your customer is because when marketing, you're basically putting yourself in their shoes, right? You're basically trying to understand what problems they are dealing with, what are their day-to-day -day activities so that you can tap into that mindset and really connect with them. Yeah. Uh, that is the most important thing. And that is going to change from, you know, customer to customer or with your own thing. Right. Uh, but truly, truly understanding that, like, that is the most important, important thing. Who is your customer? What do they do? Where, 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 what do they like? What do they like to read? What websites are they on? Uh, do they have specific political views? Uh, are they mostly male or female? What's their age? Where do they live? And then once you start doing that, then you can start kind of creating this profile behind, okay, what is my perfect customer? And then start creating your advertising towards that. And A B test, right? Like the biggest thing I always tell people is like realize like your your first product, your first marketing campaign, your first whatever is most likely gonna suck. It's gonna probably suck. But depending on you know how you adjust it, I mean just changing, you know, how you start your first five second video or how you change your offer or you know, maybe the different music that you change, change, A B test and uh and see what works see what works like the big thing is like just testing being okay yeah. with failure being okay like okay i know this is probably not going to work but i know that you know creating ads creating advertising doing marketing is a creative muscle and the more you work it out the better you get it mm -hmm. so in your opinion and this may be subject to change so like for any business brand what do you think is the most important like platforms to you so for example if i were to answer that question i think it would be like first instagram then TikTok, then like maybe youtube uh, like Facebook and then blogs, YouTube and so on. Like, what do you think like in your specific order? It, like it may change in one week or another next month, but right now if businesses or if any entrepreneurs thinking about creating a business, what social media platform do they have to have to um, hop on or not only social media, but like it can be like SEO blogging. Yeah. So just what so platform in your mind? I think number one is Google, right? Okay. Number one is Google is the most important thing, right? Because number one with Google, uh, well, first, everyone and their mother uses Google, right? So that's that's one thing. Two, Google is going to give you potential leads of people who are already... People, I'm, I'm going to use pizza for as, 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 as a example, right? Mm -hmm. for, for, for Google you have to convince or no, sorry, on Facebook, you have to convince people that, you know, they want pizza. Mm -hmm. So, sorry. Uh, so for Google, for Facebook, you have to convince people that, Hey, my pizza is good. 
uh, pick my pizza. But for Google, you have to say, here's my pizza. That's pretty much it because basically they're already searching for pizza, right? You don't have to convince them. So being really good on Google, having good SEO, having good uh, ad copy, having a good ad score, all that stuff is super, super important. So I think Google is your number one thing because that's where most people are going to find you, right? Mm -hmm. Then two, I would say is Facebook. Facebook's very important, especially depending on your demographic. I mean, most people use Facebook and most of the people that are actually buying a lot of stuff that can afford like more high ticket products like people who are over 30 are most likely going to be using Facebook as well. Um, I think Instagram is also important as well, but you starting to see Instagram is more slowly dying. I would say Instagram and Instagram and TikTok are a little bit tied because the only reason why I say TikTok is, is good because it, why TikTok compares or competes with Instagram for that position of importance is that the algorithm for the for you page allows you to blow up tremendously. So, <coughs> and no other social media has that. No social media right now to this day ha gives you the opportunity to truly reach as many people as TikTok does. Mm -hmm. uh, their algorithm is incredible. Like I'm a huge fan. Yeah. So, so was it the same for Instagram like in the beginning? Because like I downloaded Instagram maybe like three or four years after it was like popular. But when like you, when you first start uh, the new social media platform, the organic reach is crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, so the specific, so with the way that TikTok does it is way different, right? So they have, they give you two options, right? To view the content of things that you like and you follow or just whatever the fuck we put in front of your face, right? And the content that they put in front of your face is the way that they do it is that they, ex they, you post a video and they show it to, let's say, you know, X amount of people, right? They show, they show it to a hundred people based on those a hundred people on how those 100 people act. Then they have a second wave. Then they'll show it to maybe another 500 people, depending on how those 500 people react, then they'll show it to another one. Now, if those people enjoy and keep on viewing, then they just push it to a bigger crowd, right? To maybe around like 4,000, 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. And then if it just keeps on going, right? It, it, and the, the qualities that they look for are number one, watch rate, right? So how long are people watching? Are people watching for 30, 30 seconds? Are they watching for 60 minutes? Are you on video? Yeah. Can you lie down? Just lean back in this chair. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, they're basically paying attention to certain aspects, right? So they're paying attention to watch time. How long are you watching your video, right? So if it's a 60 second video, are they watching past 30 seconds? Are they watching more than 50% of the video, right? Then two, rewatch rate. Are they rewatching the video a lot? Number three is, are they either sharing, liking, or commenting, right? But the two most important is, watch time and then rewatch. And why is that more important than likes, comments, and shares? It's because it keeps the people on the app. And that's all that TikTok wants. They just want you to stay on the app, right? And they do a pretty damn good job of doing it. So that, that, that's how you have to structure your content, specifically for TikTok, right? Whether that be, you know, posting a small little glimpse of whatever you want them to see, where you just show it, show it for like a split second. And then you have to like, oh, I didn't catch it. Let me rewatch it. I didn't pa pause it enough. Let me rewatch it. Oh, I can't pause it fast enough. So let me save the video. Okay. Now you've told the algorithm. Okay. This person saved the video. Let's boost it more. Like those little, little hacks that you can do to increase your, your chance of, you know, having the algorithm push your video. Um, but to answer your original question, your experience with TikTok, and you get like 50,000 uh, followers, right? Yeah. Around there. Well, I think, yeah. So describe like your experience. Like when did you first download TikTok? What videos went viral? What, what was the yeah, first time? Yeah, so it's the first time I downloaded TikTok. I downloaded it pretty late, honestly. Uh, I downloaded it at the beginning of quarantine. So like around March, like around March. Mm -hmm. And I was going to make, you know, I saw that there is, I, I downloaded the app and I was just like, you know, using it. I was a user. I, I, I was a consumer. And I, you know, saw that there was a small trading community. 
right? So I was like, oh, like these people are giving some interesting, you know, contacts and information. Like, I think I can give my two cents. So I read a little bit more about the algorithm and said, so like, okay, how do like videos pop off? Now, TikTok basically gives you four tries to blow up. They, they, they give you four tries to blow up. And if you don't blow up, they basically push your account down. And it's very hard to pop off after that. So I know I, I knew I needed to make sure that my first four videos were really, really good. Uh, so I created, you know, kind of like clickbaity titles and I gave people, you know, I understood, okay, so who is my customer, right? Or who is my perfect customer? My perfect customer are people who, you know, know that the stock market exists, knows that people can make money off it, but don't know shit about it. So what I did was basically my first video was how to know whether a stock is a good buy or a bad buy, right? A question that everybody has, Hey, how do I know if this is a good buy or a bad buy? And then I went and I talked about, you know, I said, Hey, you guys have probably seen, or you guys have probably seen that the stock market has been going crazy. Or it was like, you guys see that the stock market is going crazy, but you have no idea what to do. Don't worry. I got you. Like basically like getting into them, like telling them, Hey, wow. Like that's exactly how I feel. Right? Like I know that there's this whole thing that's going on, but I have no idea what to do. Let me keep on listening. Okay. I'm going to tell you how to know whether uh, a stock is a good buy or not. Oh, wow. Okay. Like, let me keep on listening. And exactly. You, you just have to trim the fat, make, make it so that people are engaged. Every single video, every single piece of content that you shoot has a purpose and has a purpose. It's a point of inf in, like informing people or, I mean, I mean, that's honestly it, right? Every piece of content should be a, a way of informing people. Yeah. You have to create, it, it, you, you have to create value. Now there's other ways of, you know, blowing up on TikTok by just doing like crazy, stupid shit, but it's like, what do you want to be known for? Like for me personally, like I wanted to give information and value to people. Yeah. I think like what you did, like using your digital media skills and applying that to TikTok, you know, finding out who your customer is and then you blowing up within those four videos. That's kind of like cool how like being in one sort of subject and then applying that to something else. And that's the, the cool thing about like, I think with entrepreneurship, like you kind of acquire these skills, you kind of have that habit, that tendency of like kind of like knowing things or testing things out, applying it somewhere else. And, you know, and it worked with TikTok. You kind of know your stuff. You, were, you reverse engineered the situation and now you have like an impressive following, you know? Yeah, man, it's been, it's been great. Um, you know, I've honestly slowed down a little bit since I've been getting more into like my marketing stuff and taking up a lot of time. But, uh, you know, I'm still trying to push as much content as I can uh, it, it more of looking at it as a way to like, you know, get more likes or followers or stuff like that. Now I'm looking at more as a way to like, let me keep like using that creative muscle. Right. Like I said before, creativity, it's not that you lack creativity is that you don't practice it enough. Mm -hmm. Right. You need to work it out like a muscle, right? It is a muscle. Your brain is a muscle. So if you aren't thinking about creative things every day, how do you think it's, what, it's just going to pop into your head? That's not how it works. Yeah. Right. Uh, start off with like, okay, let me think of, you know, just five ideas a day. Let me just write them down. Think of start, start off by writing five ideas a day, then six, then seven, then 10. And it'll get to the point that now you're just thinking about shit all the time. Um, so I've, I've noticed that when I was pumping out content consistently, oh my God, all these ideas were consistently popping off, popping off. And now that I've, you know, moved my time more towards uh, marketing and working with different clients and stuff like that, um, I, I, I want to come back to that and yeah. creativity and, and being able to work that muscle mm -hmm. on it. So yeah, um, just like a couple more questions before we, we finish here. So where, like, number one, like where can people find you? Like what social media platforms are you using? And what resources do you like recommend uh, people who want to go into like making their own ad agency, digital uh, media agency, or they want to invest? Like what books, podcasts, YouTubers, well, what basically what resources do you recommend? What resources do I use? Yeah. So the number one, so for trading, so for trading specifically, I'd say the best resources that you can use are books, right? Uh, when you're just starting to trade, stay away from technical analysis and learn the fundamentals first, right? You don't want to get ahead of yourself too much, 
You want to just learn the simple principles of investing. You want to learn how the market works. You want to learn, you know, about bonds. You want to learn about, you know, credit swaps. You want to learn about, you know, stock splits. You want to learn about, you know, what the hell is this whole finance world that is happening behind the doors that I have no idea what's happening. Like learn the lingo, learn the language before you're like, Oh, I'm learning how to create triangles and stuff on the charts. Like no, 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 the right steps to take first. So like I said, learn the fundamentals first, okay. learn the trading psychology. One of the best books that I recommend is trading for a living. Uh, another one is a uh, common, uh, the little book about investing or common sense. I forget exactly what it's called. Um, I would say a really good website that I use is, um, God, I don't know. It's not off the top of my head. No, it's, it's been a minute. It, 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 it's been a while since I've had to you use send me the link later and I'll add it to the show notes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you some information. Um, now for, uh, marketing, Exactly. There's a few books that I have that I could tell you that really, really blew my mind. So you're really a, like a book sort of person. You love I'm more books. of a book. I'm actually more of an audible person. So I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll read too, but I like to, uh, I like to, uh, to, to listen to books. It's well. six o'clock. Yeah. I like, I like to listen to books a lot too, because it allows for my, you know, if I'm cooking, if I'm doing laundry, I'm just doing errands. I can still be consuming knowledge. Yeah more convenient. Yeah. Um, so books for marketing, right? The 22 immutable laws of marketing really, really good. Right. Then you have influence the psychology of persuasion. That's a really, really good one. Um, where, Ooh, a really good one to deal with clients, right? Um, to deal with clients, it's crucial conversations, tools for talking when the stakes are high. Amazing. Blue, blew my mind. And you always apply uh, these principles to your, your businesses, right? That one is just for life in general. Oh, yeah? that, that, that one's just for like, you know, you're always making negotiations in your life, right? You're always negotiating everything. Like you go through, like you make like five negotiations a day, people say like, and just by little things that you can say, do, act, you can really change the outcome of your life with those little conversations that you have with people. Um, because, I mean, you just be surprised how like one conversation can lead to an opportunity and then it changes your life. So you really wanna be prepared for those, those, uh, those, those conversations. One thing that I got into before I even started learning about marketing is just learning how to talk to people. Like, how do you talk to people? Because a big thing in the marketing is first selling yourself. So learn to sell yourself before you can learn to sell other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what's another one? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say those are the biggest ones, honestly, that helped me, um, that helped me a lot. I'd say influence is a really big one. Crucial conversations and influence. Those are killer ones. Killer I'll ones. I'll add links to those, to those books. Um, so yeah. So where can like people find you? Your social media, your website, your ad agency. Yeah. Uh, so my agency is called KNK dot agency. Um, I do everything from website optimization, social media management, pay per click, uh, advertising, re behavioral retargeting, the whole shebang, A to Z. Um, and on social media, you can find me at I am, I'm Sebastian Paredes, basically just I'm Sebastian Paredes. Uh, and my TikTok is risk reward. All right, cool. So I add those to the show notes. Hopefully people can hit you up, learn from you and yeah, get some value from your, from your content, you know, and hopefully you can post more content on TikTok, you know? Yes, man. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, I've been, I've been missing the creativity. So I'm definitely going to be posting more. Yeah, Definitely man, we'll be posting. That muscle. Don't, don't lose that grind, you know? I 100% agree. Couldn't have said it better. Hi, right, Sebastian. I appreciate your time, man. I think we learned a lot here. All right, Andres. Take care, man. Thank you, man.